Hey, welcome to Power 4 modeling the old school joystick. So I take, thought I'd take this a step further considering it's a, supposed to be game art, tips and tricks, tutorial. So, um, and I also got a couple of requests. So, it'd um, be a good idea to, uh, to take this and create the game res mesh from it. And then I was going to do a part 5 as well and show how to um, bake down the normal maps. So, there's many different ways to approach this you know when your end goal is is to bake a normal map from a high poly mesh to a low poly mesh you know there's so many different ways to model and um, to model both the high poly and the low poly and depending on how you model the high poly and whether you do the high poly first or second um, will kind of dictate the method you might use so I'll give you an example in this piece here what I like to do a lot of the time is if I'm using sub D techniques I'll just model the low poly um, as I normally would for sub D modeling as I've shown in, in this video and then I'll just take that high poly and optimize it and tweak it um, to get the low poly so I don't have to completely manually retopologize it from scratch because for hard surface stuff, especially, you know, auto retopology just doesn't really, it doesn't really cut it, you know. And a lot of the times you don't want to fully rebuild a model either by manually retopping it. Hard surface stuff, um, it's still quick to do. Um, if you're familiar with the tools, but, you know, you're kind of halfway there, or even more than halfway there, when you already have... Um, a base for the low poly built so I'll just give a quick um, example as I said and I'll show this here this part here I'm just going to solo that out um, turn on poly frame and this is with dynamic subdivision now the most important thing for creating your low poly is that the silhouette uh, closely matches the high poly and when it doesn't you're going to get normal make Blah, normal uh, bake errors not errors but issues I suppose um, visual sort of the, the most obvious example being um, waviness on cylindrical or rounded off um, meshes and obviously because um, the high poly is capturing the surface normals sor um, sorry the low poly is capturing the surface normals of the high poly so the high poly is completely smooth so if I turn off dynamic subdivision this obviously isn't so you can see there like the likes of that there on the, the silhouette um, isn't the same and that wouldn't bake down onto a normal map so I didn't really want to go into too much theory I just sort of I was going to do some normal map sort of videos later on theory sort of stuff but I just wanted to show this process because I've been rambling on for three and a half minutes already. So as I say, I like to uh, build from the existing high poly where I can when using sub -days. So I'm just going to um, shift click on that to send it to the bottom of the list and then I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to click the eyeball and that is going to hide everything but this sub tool that's selected and then I'm going to click on this again and then click the eyeball and then I'm going to rename this one to high and I'll rename this one to low so for the low I'm going to press D turn off dynamic subdivision and go to the high and just wanted to uh, turn off solo as well so now we can kind of see the silhouette so I'll select the low and what I like to do um, is I'll just use traditional subdivision and control D and that will bring me up a level so now you can see if I drop back down you know automatically you know we're getting that silhouette now if I, if I go in closely 
you can see here we're quite close on the silhouette you know and you know that is still going to be quite faceted so you could locally kind of add in some edges here or you could just subdivide again to bring you much closer in silhouette and now if I delete lower that's what the wireframe actually is going to be like so I'll solder that out and it's obviously you know it's way too dense for a low poly so I'm showing this in ZBrush but I would actually be doing this kind of work in my 3D package which is 3D Max um, I'll get some of it done here I'll show getting some of it done in ZBrush for those people because a lot of people um, you know come to me channel I think for the ZBrush kind of videos so I'm going to just show in ZBrush I'm not going to show all of it in ZBrush some of it's going to be in Max because it just doesn't make any sense to do certain things in ZBrush um, and realistically if you're creating game art you should really have it be using the 3D package whether it's even Blender or whatever it happens to be <coughs> excuse me student version of Max or Maya or Modo whatever you're using Modo Indie you really should have one as a kind of a hub that everything goes through so you know even if I'm using ZBrush, 3D Max, Substance Painter, Marmoset um, and whatever UE4 whatever I happen to be using everything is going to be going through Max at some stage so I'll get on with this here I've waffled on enough as I said I didn't want to go on into too much theory but I feel it's important to explain why I'm, I'm doing it like this so if we come down here to edge loop, there's quite a handy little feature in ZBrush um, that'll basically just get rid of any um, edge loops, superfluous edge loops that aren't really helping. Um, you know, they aren't gonna, aren't doing anything for the silhouette basically, or the forms. So if they're gone, the forms or silhouette will still be maintained. So well, that's the default is 45. I've clicked that now. You can see. Um, it gets rid of way too much. This is an angle threshold similar to the crease threshold or the group by normal threshold. So control Z to undo that. And I'll drop this right down to about 20 ish and delete loops again. And if I undo that and unsolo and just watch the silhouette here, <coughs> it's quite hard to see, but just you know, keep an eye here in the silhouette and I'll hit that again, delete loops. And you can see that, you know, it really, it really didn't change that much. We lost a bit of the, the width here, because you're always looking for, as I said, silhouette. Because um, when the when the rays are cast in the normal map bake process, um, or any of the bake processes, AO map or whatever it happens to be, um, you know, the closer, the high and the low match. And the easier it is going to be to get results so that might actually just be because you know it can't just shrink because there's no subdivision involved so maybe I think it's just a display error here so this this actually is up to the edge of this you can see if I just orbit around a bit so that gave us a good head start and you know it got rid of all these edge loops and all the ones that were in here so if I control Z solo out again and just hit it once more just so you can see again you know it gets rid of all these uh, around here around here th th that just are not needed so it's keeping the ones that we need to maintain the forms circular cut out in the middle and obviously these rounded corners which are important so with that done there you know we can optimize further choose Z modeler hover over a poly delete a flat island and you know if I unsolo and I don't need to unhide everything but basically this is this hole is going to be covered up it serves its, pur its purpose in the high poly and it doesn't matter because it'll bank it'll bake bl uh, bake blanks are basically a, um, a, a mid blue or what what's a neutral kind of a color in um, in the normal map which it doesn't capture any details so it doesn't affect um, 
the normal map it's neutral as I say it's like a neutral grey in a bump map or a mid grey in a bump map or a displacement map so we can just delete that because we don't need it and that's inside there as well and we don't need that I'll just turn off double and get rid of that as well so if you look up the top here active points that's um your uh, that's your vert count in zbrush so i'm just going to undo and we'll go back to here and you can see now it's it's just about 3000 so even by doing that delete loops it brings it down to 440 and then delete that and that and that and that brings us down to 296 um, and we can still <coughs> optimize some more you know in modern game engines um, the poly count doesn't matter as much as it used to and um, the bottleneck is generally um, in textures um, but I'm just gonna increase all so you don't have to go too crazy depending on your your proper asset or character background hero um, going to be seen up close, going to be mid-range, uh, never going to be seen up close. Whatever it happens to be, um, you want to make that decision. Or you might, you know, if you're working as part of a team or in a project, you might get a budget, a spec sheet of each asset. Uh, texture sizes, how many textures, um, the vert count. Because although the, the, the game engine it renders everything in triangles, it's the on-card vertex count that actually... Um, really matters um, and I'm going to show that um, maybe not in this video but uh, there's a handy script in Max Uber Vert Count um, that gives an exact number of verts on card verts that you know it's a representation of exactly what you're going to get in the game engine uh, based on mesh verts and then uh, split verts which are UV splits, material ID splits and smoothing group splits you know, anywhere there's either one of those splits, you're, it's going to uh, double that vertex. So, you know, that's more or less what we're looking for there. And, you know, it's it's very quick there. I've, only, I've just clicked <coughs> um, a couple of buttons there, and it's got us way down to quite a low count. You know, and then, you know, all this stuff here in the middle is not doing anything. It's not contributing to the silhouette. Um, so we want to keep this inner circle because obviously, you know, that's a very important feature. We want to keep these because they're um, very important also in the silhouette. And, you know, we don't have to get rid of any of these. But what you can do is start stitching up because all these, remember, are going to be <coughs> triangulated anyway. Uh, but the game engine, or even beforehand, because you're going to be triangulating your mesh before baking a normal map, and you're essentially going to be exporting a triangulated mesh from, um, in my case, 3D Max. So, I'm going to press X to turn on symmetry in, um, in X and Z so we can do this a lot quicker. And I just wanted to check it looked like symmetry wasn't found, but it is. So let me just check something. I'm going to start here by just stitching these verts just like a weld tool. So stitch two points. So I'm just going to start welding some of these together. And there's where the non symmetrical is happening. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mirror and weld in X and Z just to get that symmetry back and now I'll stitch these again and another thing to bear in mind is um, long and thin triangles um, are not really good. You want to always kind of maintain as short triangle edges as you can, but of course this is 
is never um you know it's never possible to to completely um maintain short uh, edges on your triangles because you're always going to have bits like this where you know that's going to create two uh, long thin triangles but they won't be a problem it's more so if you had if you have crazy kind of topology like you might get from booleans um you could end up with you know pole where there could be you know i don't know up to 20 edges or something um if there's no support in geometry those edges have to find a vert and they all might converge onto one which could lead to almost parallel edges on a triangle and it's almost as if part of the edge is crossing over to a neighboring edge and that's just bad for for bacon and i'll get into that a bit later on as well and maybe another video or whatever but um we can continue here to just stitch these and remember we want to keep this silhouette so we can't stitch any of these together and this is symmetrical so we're not going to stitch that and um, you can also as well um spin edges so you can see there that we want to turn edges the same as turning edges and max um it'll just so sorry about that, I had a crash and I lost <laughs> lost it all, but uh, the funny thing is um, that it only took me less than a minute to get from um, you know, the high poly back to where we were pretty much. So that's how quick quickly you can sort of optimize this stuff. Um, so I'm just going to um, re-stitch some of these again. So stitch two points and we can just uh, stitch these and then we can stitch these and then you can see here where I mirror and welded you know I did that just to get that symmetry back but um, I ended up adding in these extra edge loops, so um, we can just alt click, ho hover over an edge, insert edge loop, single edge loop, and then just alt click just to get rid of that. And so now they are mamosh. So you know we could still optimize this. Um, this circle here I'm just gonna actually use a Z modeler move infinite depth you know get rid of some of them spread those out a little bit and we're down to 240 now and then also you can see that as I said before this isn't doing anything here so We can quickly with the uh, X and Z symmetry on, just stitch some of them up, and then you can you can keep going there, you know, because as I mentioned and uh, I've mentioned it several times, but it is um, quite important. In, in fact, it's very important um, for. I'll just bring these into the middle here for baking normal maps is maintaining the silhouette and matching the, the high and low poly surfaces where they meet as closely as possible and um, that way uh, as i think i mentioned already uh sorry i'd have to turn that symmetry off that way um you're going to get much more reliable bakes and also I'm just going to control shift click to hide the polygroup. Also, as I mentioned, um, you know, I'm showing this in ZBrush because people like seeing ZBrush videos, but I would do this in Max, um, even though it's still, you know, it's, it's still fairly quick to do here. 
um, ZBrush with the X and Z symmetry on. So that's about as much, you know, as you could op optimize that. I can still optimize here because um, it's not affecting the circle feature in the middle or the silhouette. So at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I will continue on. Control Shift click to bring that back. And yeah, that's that's you know as as optimized as that is, is really gonna get. And you know you can also you know if you weren't happy with if you wanted to round that out more it wouldn't be a huge deal because all you'd have to do is you know cut from here maybe rearrange some of that and then just cut from here and then that'll give you more local kind of resolution and then you know you could just you don't have to go all the way down with those loops you just finish them off and terminate them here as triangles and if you're used to sub demodeling um, or that's all you do kind of you have to get into the mindset of because a lot of people are terrified of triangles and um, when they're sub demodeling um, even though they're not really as big a deal as people make out um, quads are obviously um, optimal for several reasons but not always essential yeah you don't have to worry about about them basically you can use um, triangles much to your advantage so that's that piece um, and as you can see it was very quick to do and I'm talking here and it's going on whatever minutes but um, if I was doing this it probably would have taken me five minutes um, to do this in ZBrush here to get this piece game ready that's that's pretty much game ready so what I'm going to do now is you know, the sub tool and any time I'm going to re-top out a piece here I'm just going to select it, shift select this arrow to send it to the bottom um, I'll just rename it then hexi high and duplicate it and rename hexi low and same again I'll click the eyeball that'll hide everything click on it again to bring it back and click on this one to bring that in also and it's basically the same I'm going to be doing the same sort of thing so here's the low so if I hit D you know for this you know this isn't too bad here because we have um, if I'm creating cylinders low poly cylinders um, that I intend to use this workflow on I'll generally start with 18 at least depending on what they are how big they are how close they're going to be etc and um, but if it's a major sort of a feature like this um, you know I'll start um, with 18 so now to optimize this you know we don't have to worry about our silhouette because our silhouette is going to be maintained so all we need to do then is solo out the low and just optimize so you can always start by going to geometry edge loop um, delete loops and you can drop that right down you know and that might get rid of a couple just going to increase so that was 127 delete loops 109 <coughs> should me increase you know and basically apart from you know deleting that which we don't need and also um, deleting that one that is it <coughs> there's that part ready simple as that you know couple of clicks and that part is ready so next up now is this piece here and I've just uh, duplicated and renamed just to save you having to watch that again so you know looking at it now you know it's terrible 
uh, it doesn't match up at all it's way too low poly because you know I started this from an eight sided cylinder um, but it's no big deal because uh, when I subdivide it once it's going to uh, shrink down to that um, the volume of that other high poly piece and give us that uh, give us that silhouette match now you can notice here um, if I subdivide again it's going to shrink in a bit more and that gives us a closer match but it's going to be way too many edge loops so for a case like that you know it's not a huge deal you could just slightly scale it down uh, to bring it in so I'm going to delete lower and that's the topology we're left with and I'll solder that out and we can just start again we're at 578 and I'll just go to delete a flat island delete the top delete the bottom and now I'll just increase all you know there's a lot of edge loops here that we can afford to get rid of that we don't need so if I unsolo you can see here um, insert edge loop hold and alt I can just click and it's not really affecting the silhouette that much so we can get rid of these certainly these and also you can get rid of these here and on the inside you know I'd probably I'd probably keep that one because it's if I don't if I get rid of that it's gonna the new the face will be going from here to here and it'll, you know it won't respect that curve obviously because there's no geometry in there to support it so I would keep that one in because it's you know it's not an extreme surface change but it's just enough to, to, that I would want to put some extra topology in you get rid of that one and we could pro yeah you could you could probably get rid of that one as well because there's not much of a change you know there's not really much of a change there in angle um, same goes for that one and I do the same here get rid of that one keep that one get rid of that one and then get rid of that one you know and we're pretty much you know we're pretty much finished there that's that's pretty much the low poly for that piece and you know when, when in this normal map bacon process um, the likes of this I talked about uh, waviness in the normal map earlier on where you're baking a perfectly um, smooth and, and round high poly curved surface onto a faceted low poly so the normal map will get you only so far you know it's it's not magic so um, and this is why silhouette matters so much and I keep going on about it because you know if I un sorry they are both unhidden you can see like the silhouette is pretty much the same for both of them so you're not going to notice at certain angles you'll notice that a cylinder obviously is faceted um, or a curve is faceted if there isn't enough segments but um, it's not always noticeable and, and with normal map baking especially when you're only starting off you want to be just doing it you know a lot of test bakes and see how this stuff works you can read about it all you like but or watch videos or whatever but until you actually get in there and do these tests yourself um, you won't really fully understand certain aspects of it so um, you know I would, be, I would be happy with this now I would do a test bake um, to see how it looked but I'm pretty you know the more you do the more confident you're going to be so you might need to do a test bake you just know that your bake's going to going to turn out good um, if you follow certain steps so this isn't about normal map baking but it goes hand in hand with creating the low poly um, and and having your low poly and high poly match as closely as possible um, to give a better bake basically because um, there's not as much work f um, to do for the baking algorithm because you know you're, you're giving it a lot rather than if you had a sloppy sort of a low poly that's not conforming to your high poly 
and there's going to be a lot of fiddling around with uh, maybe cages or ray distances or whatever so that is that part done uh, for the next part then and um, we'll come down here to this one here and I'll just hide everything uh, click on it and if I also unhide the low and D you'll see obviously <laughs> that's pretty terrible and certainly not suitable for our game mesh so same thing again subdivide it once which I think is enough and solo it out and now and delete lower on all and there's the topology we're left with and we get a great starting point by the leaf flat island the leaf flat island geometry edge loop delete loops drop the angle threshold to 20 or thereabouts delete loops cleans it up nicely and then we can just uh, insert edge loop alt click on that to get rid of that and now it's just a matter of stitching a couple of these up so I just you don't even have to bother turn on symmetry I can just stitch these up and even stitch that in there and if I wanted to just stitch that over there stitch that there and that is pretty much that's pretty much it that's that piece finished you know ready to go now you can add um, chamfers into these for even better results then it, it, again that depends on view and angle and you know when an, an assets textured you mightn't even notice these I use these a lot these uh, just 90 degree sharp angles um, the type of uh, baking I do you don't have to worry about UV or smoothing group splits it's a synced kind of bake averaged bake so I don't even worry about them too much unless they're really noticeable and if that's the case I can change it a lot of this stuff is iterative as you're baking and everything as you're working your asset you know you know you have to change things and go back and maybe to change your UVs or even just your topology or triangulation or whatever so that is that piece done and back to sub tool and now some of these other pieces and we've done that piece we've done that piece and that's the kind of the rest of them are just really really simple these uh, tarry bits here are they're going to be baked straight to the normal map so you don't even have to worry about a low poly for them the joystick is about as simple as it gets so I'm going to duplicate that and rename that to and um, we'll just call that low um, and now if I just drop out dynamic subdivision and uh, sorry I'm just going to unhide that as well and on solo and there's the difference between the two of them which is you know pretty much nothing so I want to just um, hide, unhide everything click on the low click on the high and increase all and you know silhouette as I say is pretty much the same they're both visible there and you can't really see anything so I'll solo out the low and there's a couple of edge loops down here that were just to uh, were holding holding edge loops uh, because this is such a long surface here and you subdivide it if they weren't there I'll show you what happens um, D it just shrinks because there's no um, it's trying to average itself and it subdivides and there's no supporting geometry so that was just supporting loop and get rid of that and then also uh, I've turned on uh, radial symmetry in the Y six count that I know from setting this up um, one two three that it was 18 sides so it's good to set up your cylindrical geometry um, so they can evenly divide them for using radial symmetry and then it's just simply a matter of um, doing a bit of stitching and let's just stitch these in here and then stitch that in there sorry I'll just stitch this in here and sometimes that happens uh, where it doesn't find symmetry and 
it's a bit annoying because um the symmetry is there you know you can clearly see that it's there so I'll just try it over here yeah and it worked over there so sometimes that happens with um, symmetry so just watch out for that so that is pretty much you know that's that piece done and um, if we on solo you know the silhouette matches up nicely um, onto the next part here, I'll just solo that out and frame it up. You know, so this piece here, I just drop out dynamic subdivision. You know, this is only um, an eight sided cylinder, so it's quite low poly. So, you know, yeah, you'd want you'd want to subdivide that, uh, delete lower, and then you can just uh, get rid of those edge loops and get rid of that one probably and delete flat island increase all you know and that's yeah that's pretty much it then and then lastly you could just come in and yeah, stitch these together so you know it doesn't matter too much how you stitch them you can stitch them in different ways to try and get less verts or whatever um, you know if this wasn't going to be symmetrically baked you could even just stitch it like this and then that'll be you know a triangle from there to there and that'll just be split up and that will be split up from there probably to there and symmetrical baking then that's something I'll definitely do that in a future video I did an, have an older video there of it but I'll, I'll definitely do an updated version um, so I'll just go back to there. Yeah, so you get the idea. You can, uh, we can weld those up or collapse them to a single point, a polar point. And next up is last but but definitely least the simplest of all because there's the high poly and there's the low poly. You don't have to do anything. It's just um, it, it, that is the low poly. So that's it for the low poly and what I'm going to do now is uh, turn off solo and I'm just going to start from the top and we'll just start unhiding uh, these low poly so that's low low and low 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 shift F frame off and I'll just go to grey turn off transparent and I'm just gonna fill uh, back to white no, I don't even need to fill it yeah so there is the completed low poly and it was quite simple it was all we did all in ZBrush um, using simple tools uh, mostly Z modeler and a little bit of automation and that is that's it you know um, it's a quite a handy way when you're building sub D's of getting a quick uh, game res asset that's going to bake pretty good because it's based on the exact same geometry I think I said this earlier in the video but a lot of people create their high force and then create their low but when I'm doing sub D's I don't see the sense in that I'd rather create the low and high at the same time as a subdivision divided model and then just do this uh, tweak optimize it's just um, just makes more sense to me it's it's quicker um, but as I also think I mentioned th there are other times then when you're gonna have to manually retopo for optimal results because it's all well and good um, you know just getting a tr decimated mesh or triangulated or whatever it depends on the asset but having um, you know clean edge loops and quads and things like that are quite handy f for UV and can make your life a lot easier when you're UV -ing. and then you can just triangle triangulate at the end without really affecting the UVs uh, before export for bake so that is the end of this video in fact I recorded this part 
three times because I lost the video so there is actually another little part after this about silhouette again again so just uh, hang on for that so lastly I just wanted to show why I was going on about uh, silhouette and basically this is the reason right here in the screen on the left here we have um, the high poly fully subdivided and on the right is the low poly that we just created and as you can see they're pretty much identical um, when silhouetted like this um, and, and that's pretty that pretty much sums up the importance of uh, of, of silhouette and um, when baking uh, low from high so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go to subtool master I don't think I've ever showed this in any of my videos and fill and fill object just to fill all them back and as you can see there yeah that is the low poly now it's all faceted here but but you don't worry about that because you're capturing the surface normals from this high poly onto your low poly which is the purpose of all this so those facets you know you're not going to see them and um, you'll see them um as I said on uh, cylindrical or curved surfaces that don't have enough um, segments but you know if you if you look around the silhouette you know the way it's built you're, you're not going to see any chunkiness on the silhouette in other words you're not going to see um, you know you, sometimes you might see a, a character a low poly character but when you silhouette the character like this um, or even look closely if it's rimly you'll see kind of you know not these days of course but previous generations um you will see say the shoulder might be uh, quite low poly and you'll see that uh, kind of clunkiness or faceted look around it so that is where i'm going to leave this and i certainly hope this has been useful i'm definitely going to go into more detail and this sort of stuff but uh, this is one way and it's a way i like to do it um, it's quite quick to do as you've seen and it works on any model that you've built using sub D. So you might see all these other techniques um, p people are using, um, myself included, booleans or Fusion 360 or um, similar methods that gives you a rubbish topology that, that's pretty much unusable. Well, this is a way to, um, you know, to, to, to to build quickly as well using sub D's. Now you're not going to be able to get as complex. Like this is very very simple sub sub D. So for a very very complex piece like um, you know a machine gun in a first person, you might use those boolean techniques or whatever. So the time that you save building the high poly, which is going to be a lot if you try to build some of those complex guns and sub D, you know it's going to take you a lot of time. And if you're not really that familiar with sub D it'll probably break your heart so that's where the boolean methods come in each method has its own place as far as i see but you will lose a bit of time in, because you're gonna have to be rebuild or at least rebuild most of that boolean model um, manually probably or there's other ways to uh, revert the boolean um, in a non-destructive way but we might take a look at that another time so that's enough i think for this video and as i say yeah hopefully it's been helpful and look out for the next part um actually now that i think about we'll have to uv it for the next part but there's a request on poly count for to show me bacon methods that they do in substance painter so the next video actually will probably just be another one of these game art videos with um a simple bacon process just using a cube or something but I, I definitely will take this further and um, UV it and then bake it at a later date. All right, then I'm going to shut up now. And uh, thanks anybody that watched. And hopefully it was useful. All right, then. Cheers. Thanks. Good luck.